Hello, it's James here. Today we're going to do a 3D printing video and we're going to try and print something that would normally be impossible. And we're going to do that with the new Lulzbot V3 Dual Extruder. And this is specifically being designed for using water soluble support. So what's new in the V3 Dual Extruder? Well on the left here we've got the old, this is a version 2 Dual Extruder, in fact it's a Flexi Dually. So we've got the Flexi Extruder and the normal Extruder with the idler. And uh, that's basically two extruders with two motors. Um, and that's just been sort of fitted on a plate to make a dual extruder. So that's the old way it was done. And this is the new one, which is actually much better engineered. Instead of those plastic idlers, we've got these uh, pinch things here to load the filament with a spring that holds it shut to grip it. Uh, we've got these smaller gears, which actually look injection molded rather than printed. And the heater and hot end block there is actually sort of precision engineered out of one piece of metal with both hot ends on and one fan instead of being separate on another plate and everything. So hopefully the calibration is much better. On this one we had to calibrate the distance, on this one it should be fixed and uh, precision engineered in the factory. So altogether it looks like a much better unit. So why is that good you might ask? Well with a normal print, if we want to do some sort of rakish overhangs or we want to do a bridge that's too long or we want to print a dome that's hollow inside, generally we put support material in and that's done in the same material. And there's a sort of interface layer that makes it weaker so the bond is weaker and it can be snapped off. But obviously once you've snapped it off it leaves a bit of a mess on the underside of whatever you've taken off. If that's the inside of something it doesn't really matter but for some prints it'd be really good if we could just dissolve that support material away and leave a clean surface. And that's basically what this extruder is intended for, is for doing those sorts of prints. So we're going to have a go at a couple of prints with this extruder in this video and see how they turn out. Now Lulzbot have really good instructions on their website, the OHAI Open Hardware Assembly Instructions website has all of the instructions for this, everything that's in the box. And it has basically the full instructions here of how to install it, there's an extra cable and an extra filament guide that comes with it that need to be installed there. And it tells you exactly what to do, we're just going to scroll all the way down. So there's instructions here for Cura, for flashing the firmware and everything else you have to do, all the way down to uh, your first print in fact. So um, if we actually go back to uh, the root of this website, we can see that in fact there's instructions for everything, every printer and everything here. So if you're interested in how these printers are put together or how to add any options, how to put all of the tool heads on that have ever been made, all of that stuff is there. So also in the box we've got the extra cable there because it's a dual extruder so we need another cable to plug into the control box, the extra filament guide and a bunch of other bits. It looks like there's some extension to the auto wiping and auto uh, leveling that we need to fit on the printer. Obviously the nozzles are wider than the single nozzle there because there's two of them. We've also got some filament and some water soluble filament which comes in a sealed bag uh, because obviously it's water soluble so if it got damp that wouldn't be very good. So we're fitting the V3 Dual onto a Lulzbot TAS 6 and it currently actually has the more screwed tool head fitted. Now all of these Lulzbot tool heads we just have um, a connector there and one screw that holds it on and then we can just take that off and put on another tool head. So I've installed my extra extruder cable that's plugged into the control box and I've installed the extra wide wiper pad and the little extension on the ZN stop. I've upgraded the firmware with Cura and you can get that from lulzbot.com slash Cura and it's free and open source and available for a number of platforms including Debian, Ubuntu, Windows and Mac OS X. So here we've got uh, two extruders in fact for this printer, extruder 1 and extruder 2 and we've set support material on extruder 2 and I've set that material to poly dissolve which is presumably the stuff that comes with the printer. So we've got this uh, thing here to show the layers of the print and we can actually say what's printed with extruder 1 and we can see that that's the main thing and extruder 2 should only be the support material so that looks pretty good. So let's export our g-code and we'll go and put that on the printer. So I've loaded my two filaments, we've got normal Lulzbot green PLA on the left and the water soluble on the right and the printer is heating up and ready to go. So the printer is doing its wiping and levelling routine, it cleans the nozzles and then it touches each corner to auto level. Well, it's off, it looks like it's doing some water soluble first and hopefully then we'll see some green coming out but that looks like the sort of base support layer for the bottom of that impossible gear mechanism. So here comes some of that green. You'll also notice on the other side here, it's done a wipe tower. So it's printed a bit of the water soluble 
and uh, I don't know what it's doing now actually, oh there we go, so it's basically sort of purging the nozzles in between use over in the corner there so we don't get too much ooze between the colours presumably. So we're quite a bit further on in the print and uh, you can see the uh, thing being built up there so with the water soluble white material in all the gaps. So we're about 49 minutes in so it's a fairly long print, it's probably going to be three hours or something. So we'll come back at the end and see what it looks like. And what it seems to have done with this wipe tower is just printed the PLA material so it's actually wiping the other nozzle as it does it and the other nozzle cools down as it does it. So uh, basically that wipes all the ooze off and stops it oozing while it's printing with the PLA. So the second nozzle's on the right and that's presumably getting wiped off. The temperature's dropping from 220 down to 190 on the control panel. So that just causes it to get wiped along all of those lines and clean the nozzle nicely. Right, here it is. So uh, that's all printed. Obviously we've got loads of water soluble there. So we'll pop that in some water and uh, see how long it takes to dissolve. So it's a few hours later. I did give it a bit of a rinse and a bit of a poke to get some of the water soluble stuff out. I probably would have left it for about four hours for it to completely dissolve. And um, there we go, there's the thing. So all my gears rotate. And that's a really good quality print. I can't actually see which way up was up at the moment. So um, I think that might have been the bottom. But there we go. So obviously all of those, the top and the bottom, everything was full of water soluble support. Otherwise it wouldn't have worked and it would have stuck together. So yeah, that's come out really well. So that is a really good example of what to do with the water soluble support. One thing I've wanted to print for a while is the Knotted Orbit by Emmet, which you can find on Thingiverse. And this is basically a loop that goes around. There's a ball stuck in it. And obviously it's impossible to print with normally with FDM printing. So you really do need that water soluble support or something like an SLS printer. And that's what's actually being printed here. And here it is. So obviously there's a lot of water soluble support on there that we need to remove. So we'll dump that in some water for a while and uh, see what it comes out like. So it's the next day. It had been soaking for quite a while and I persuaded some more of that support material to come off. But um, there it is. There's the finished thing. So that's uh, come out pretty well. Um, it's obviously a print you couldn't really do with breakaway support. At least you could be. It would leave a mess. Um, there are some slightly... Um, sort of less glossy patches on the bottom where the support has been compared to the top surfaces. Uh, but on the whole, um, that's come out really well and you can see the ball is trapped in there and it goes all the way around as well. And that was um, obviously printed into the model in one piece. So yeah, pretty happy with that. I think there's a lot of applications for water soluble support. So that is definitely useful uh, to make really complicated prints like that. There's gonna be definitely some uses for other projects that I do for really detailed prints, for cosmetically pleasing prints. I'm probably gonna use it on the next part of Batman, so check out for that, which is probably coming up next week or being well. And um, so that's really gonna be quite useful. Obviously we can still mix materials as well. So we can do what we did with the Flexi Dually to mix rigid and flexible prints and things like that to put rigid parts encapsulated in flexible material. And that'd be really good for prosthetics or robotic parts to make those parts sort of compliant. And of course, if we build up those parts internally with different internal structures, we can change the properties of that part throughout the print. So that's gonna be really useful to make really good quality prints like that. So that's all for this time. Don't forget to subscribe for more updates on the other projects. All right, that's all for now.